God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment that you bring your children into your holy house of praise that we can worship you and give thanks unto your holy name for this season and for the year, for all that you have been doing to us for your blessings. Father, we say thank you. Speak your word, O oh God, and continue to strengthen our faith in you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are going to meditate on the theme, we are thankful, O oh Lord. We are thankful, O oh Lord. Before we go on, I'd like to thank Reverend Dr. Daniel for this opportunity that he decided to bring us all together, Christians from the Covenant Presbyterian Church, Christians from the Anglican Church, and the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, where we can have this wonderful fellowship. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. We are thankful, O oh God. History holds that about 401 years ago, that is in 1621, some pilgrims from England had an encounter with some Native Americans, and they all shared in bountiful harvest. And so as they shared, they had three days of harvest celebration. But the other side of the story tells that there was a lot of bloodshed, and so many things happened. However, they had joy of three good days in the Plymouth community, which today we hold as the Massachusetts. Some time later, the former president of America, Abraham Lincoln, decided that the celebration should not hold only on one side. And so he declared it as a public holiday, which is celebrated every November of the year. And so we gather to celebrate Thanksgiving on this Sunday. Thanksgiving, which comes up on Thursday, we begin to celebrate and we gear towards that day. Many Americans remember that day as a day of remembrance, as a day when they had a lot of harvest. But dear friends, we remember that day today as Christians because we celebrate the blessing of God in our lives. We celebrate the bountiful blessings which God bestows upon us every day. And so Paul says, in all things, God works for good for those who believe and trust in him, for those who are called according to his purpose. Yes, brothers and sisters, we are celebrating this year's harvest or this year's Thanksgiving not because everything in our life has been good, but because in all circumstances, God works for good. And so we say, thank you, O Lord. We say, thank you. And so, dear friends, Apostle Paul, in our text, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, in his final words to the Thessalonians, call on them to be joyful always, to pray continually and to be thankful in all circumstances because this is God's will in Christ Jesus for us. So we need to be thankful in all circumstances because it is God's will. When you look at the beginning of the church in Thessalonians, Acts chapter 17 tells us that while the Jews believed the story, why they believed the good news and were loving to follow Jesus Christ with a group of Gentiles who were God-fearing and some prominent women, there was another group of Jews who became jealous and hated the idea. And so they persecuted the Christians and they caused Paul to run away, to run away from the city. They chased Jason in whose house Paul lived. They took him and many other faithful believers in front of the city officials. They accused him and all the believers 
for, for defying the law or the decrees of Caesar. And now they caused them to pay a bond or a fine to release themselves. And so the believers continue to face great opposition. They continue to face pain and suffering of all kind. Yes, Paul was not ignorant of all this, yet he told them, be joyful always. Pray continually and give thanks to God in all circumstances. If Paul could have said, be joyful often, or could just say, pray when you want, or if he said, or if he had said, give thanks to God, well, we could just say, we will try. We could say that too. But he said, be joyful always and give thanks to God in every circumstance, which means there are moments when things may not be good. We have the right to give thanks to God. There are moments when things are good. We still have the right to say, God, thank you. Yes, Paul was not ignorant. And that is why he used himself as an example of someone who goes through difficult moments, yet he is thankful. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10, Paul describes himself as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. In John chapter 11, verse 35, the Bible tells us that Jesus wept for Jerusalem. And as Jesus faced the cross, Hebrew in chapter 5, verse 7 tells us that he prayed with loud crying and with tears. Yes, Paul reminds us and also encourages us in Romans chapter 12, verse 15, to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this tells us that things may not always be the way we want it. Things may not always go as we desire it as humans, but we have the right to give thanks to God in all circumstances. We live in a world and in a time when terrible things are happening around us. Earthquakes happening around us, rampant shooting and killing and taking away of human lives. We live in a time when we find illnesses and pandemic ravaging the lives of people. Accidents happening here and there. People losing their jobs. Businesses dwindling. People breaking homes and destroying families. Socioeconomic problems here and there. And others facing personal hardship, as we can name them. All these things, dear brothers and sisters, are the things that cause our pursuit of Christ to be weakened, are things that cause us our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when you talk of thanksgiving, it turns out to be something difficult for someone to say, I really want to thank God. Meanwhile, he's going through a lot of difficulties. It becomes difficult. That is why we must rely on the indwelling Holy Spirit. We must rely on the Spirit of God, which He has given to us to strengthen us and to help us in this journey of faith. Yes, brothers and sisters, being thankful is therefore a conscious attitude of commitment. It is a conscious attitude of hope. It is a conscious attitude of happiness that comes when we have a deliberate focus on Jesus Christ. When we do not derail our attention, but we focus on him, then that is the attitude we are supposed to have. We are gathered here today, members of the Covenant Presbyterian Church, members of the Anglican Church here in San Antonio, and the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon. All members in our different diversity, we are gathered to say, God, thank you for your blessings that you bestow upon us. As Christians, it should not just be thanksgiving feast, but it is a moment when we should acknowledge the love of God. It is a moment when we have to reflect and think about what God has done for us. Even when we go through hard times, what God has done for us. 
Isaiah tells us to praise the Lord and to proclaim his name. Tell the nations and the world the glorious things of the Lord. What he has done in spite of what we go through. Tell the Lord and tell the nation what he has done. Yes, dear friends, this is a moment when we have to deepen our understanding of God's sovereignty and God's goodness in our lives. And so, dear friends, God loves a heart of gratitude. God loves that heart which says, thank you, even when the heart is facing hard times. God loves that heart. Being grateful can be a habit to us when we trust God and when we make trusting God a habit in our lives. Joseph trusted God and the plan of God that came to him through dream. He trusted that plan even in prison. Paul and Silas, while in prison, trusted the plan of God and knew that God was going to help them. And so they sang songs of glory, they sang songs of praise, and they were thankful to God. When we trust God and continue to give him thanks and continue to praise him, even when things are hard, God will always be there for us. No matter the circumstance that surround us, we are encouraged to trust God and be thankful to him at all times. Because things that happen to us, circumstances that surround us, only come to draw us closer to God. Yes, God has given us his Holy Spirit that dwells within us and has to keep us joyful at all times and has to keep us thankful in every circumstance. Thanksgiving strengthens our relationship with God. It keeps us positive. It keeps us to enjoy his experiences in our lives, even in our diversities. And so we encourage us all, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, to be thankful to God at all times. Stay positive in your life. Happy Thanksgiving, and may God bless you all. Amen.